So far, to update data in the database, we've used transactions in the two ways available to do so. Running their screens and interactively entering data, and executing them as business components through a variable without using the screen. Now we'll learn another way to make insertions, modifications, and deletions in the database. We must take into account that what we'll see next can only be used in objects of procedure type, unlike the alternative we saw, which involved the use of business component and could be used from any object. In procedures, we have a command called new to insert records in a table. Using this command, we can assign values to the attributes of one physical table. We mean a table, not a transaction, because not all the attributes of a transaction structure are included in the physical table. For example, if we want to insert a flight, the flight transaction has many attributes stated in structure and are not physically included in the flight table. Instead, they are in the extended table of the flight table. We've included them in the structure to show them in the form or use them in the rules. If we go to the tables node and locate the flight table, we see only the attributes belonging to the flight table. We can include these attributes within a new command and assign values to them. Genexus will determine the physical table in which the record will be inserted, examining the attributes to the left of the equal sign. If they all belong to the same physical table, the record will be inserted in said table. Otherwise, will be informed that the table in which we want to perform the insertion cannot be determined. The table found by Genexus is called base table of the new command. Let's go back to assigning values to attributes. Note that we haven't assigned a value to the primary key attribute flight ID. That's because flight ID has its auto number property set to true, and therefore the database will assign its value automatically and consecutively. Since the new command inserts one record in one table, we can only assign values to the attributes belonging to that single physical table. That is, we can't assign values to attributes that belong to different physical tables. We can skip assigning a value to an attribute of the table in which we're performing insertions, whether because it's not necessary, such as flight ID because it's auto-numbered, or because we want to leave an attribute unspecified. For example, if we don't assign a value to flight price, the inserted record will be left without a price, in other words, with an empty price or not specified. We must remember that procedures don't check the consistency of the data we assign. For example, in these assignments, we can assign any value to the flight price, because this detail is not related to other tables. However, we are doing all other assignments to airport and airline identifiers, so we should be careful in assigning values that exist in the tables where airports and airlines are stored, respectively. In this example, we assigned identifier value 1 to the departure airport and identifier 2 to the arrival airport, aware that in our airports table we have the Guarulhos airport stored with identifier 1 and the Charles de Gaulle airport with identifier 2. We've also recorded the airline with identifier 1 corresponding to TAM. However, if we had assigned an airport or airline identifier value that was not recorded, the procedure wouldn't validate it, so we may be entering inconsistent data. Since databases check the consistency of interrelated data, when the user runs the application and tries to assign an inconsistent value, the database will reject the operation and the inconsistent data will not be saved. However, the program will stop working, and this isn't very user-friendly. Therefore, if we use procedures to update the database, it'll be our responsibility to assign valid and well-related data. Here we explained it for an insertion using the new command, but the same should be taken into account when updating data or deleting records. Let's see how we can update an existing value in the database. To replace a value stored in an attribute with another value, we navigate its base table with the foreach command and give it a new value through an assignment. We can make assignments to attributes of the base table we're navigating and to those of the extended table. In this example, 
Since the only attribute included in the foreach command is flight price, the base table navigated by Genexus is flight. Since no filters have been defined, all the table records will be navigated. For each flight, we update its price, and in this case, we increase it by 10%. Now we look at Genexus to put this into practice. We will solve the same feature that we had implemented using the business component concept, and we will be able to compare both solutions. Recall that we had a web panel called Enter Percentage, in which the travel agency user could enter a percentage and press the Confirm button to execute this code to navigate all flights and increase the price of each flight. We right-click on the tab with the object name and select Save As to obtain a copy of the object with another name. We call it Enter Percentage 2. Here we have the new web panel, and so far it's identical to the previous one. We open the event associated with the Confirm button. Even though this event has a for each command, the possibility of using it to update attributes by assigning values to them is only allowed in procedure objects. So we delete this code, and in the enter event we only include a call to a procedure, which is the one that will update the database. We create the procedure object, and call it increase flight prices. And in the source, we write the same code we proposed in this example. We type for each flight and press Control Enter to autocomplete and select flight price. To the flight price attribute, we'll assign the previous value multiplied by 1.10. As we've explained, the base table of this for each is flight. All flights are navigated, and for each one of them, we're increasing its price by 10%. Now we call this procedure from the web panel. We find the procedure in the folder view and drag it to the web panel. We add a period and select the call suggested in this context menu. This enter event will be executed when the user presses the button associated with it. But before running what we've done, look at a small detail. In the web panel, the user can type in this variable a certain percentage increase, and by pressing the button, we call the procedure that increases prices at a fixed percentage of 10%. Initially, we set the fixed percentage of 10% as an example. But now, we want to consider the percentage entered by the user in the web panel. How do we make the procedure know the value entered in the web panel? In the web panel, we know the value of the percentage variable, but not in the procedure. What we'll do is send the value saved in the variable when the procedure is called. To achieve this, inside the call parentheses, we include the percentage variable. Now we should receive it in the procedure. We go to the procedure, and in the rules section, we type parm, followed by parentheses. We have to receive the variable inside the parentheses, but the variable is not defined here. We can define it using the same name with which it is defined in the web panel, or with another name. The data type must be identical to the data type of the variable sent from the web panel to the procedure. Note that the data type of the percentage variable in the web panel is numeric 3. So in the procedure, we will define it in this way. Now in the rules section, inside the parentheses of the parm rule, we include the variable we received. All rules must end with a semicolon in every object, so we type it in and save. Let's open the source to include the percentage variable in the calculation. We press F5. Look at the current price of flights. Run the web panel Enter Percentage 2. Type a 50% increase and confirm.
Now we display the flight prices and see that they've increased by 50%. We must keep in mind that in a single for each command, we can update several physical tables. Specifically, a for each command always has a base table that it navigates and can change, but it can also change the entire extended table of said base table. In this example, the base table of the for each is flight. As we know, each flight has one origin airport and one destination airport, and an airline operating that flight. So in this for each, we could modify the data on those airports and airlines if needed. For instance, inside this for each, we could modify, for each flight, the data relative to the airline associated with that flight. We've seen how procedures allow us to insert and update records in the database. Now we'll see how to delete records. To delete records, we have the delete command that is used within a for each command. Basically, we need to navigate the table from which we want to delete one or more records and include the delete command within the for each. In the example, we can see that we're navigating the country table filtering by the value of a certain country, and therefore we're deleting one record with the delete command. But we also could have deleted all the countries entered in the country table. As we've said before, procedures don't take into account the data related in other tables. This for each command that deletes all countries upon execution could leave tourist attractions that make reference to countries that have been deleted. Because the database controls the consistency of interrelated data, it'll reject the operation and the program will stop working. Therefore, when using procedures, it is our responsibility to delete, assign, or insert data that is consistent with the rest of the stored data. Lastly, let's compare the two alternatives we use to update the database. In the first alternative we implemented, in the enter event of the enter percentage web panel, we type the for each command and update the database using the flight transaction as a business component. In the second solution, the enter event of the enter percentage to web panel only contains a call to a procedure. The procedure receives the percentage value, navigates all flights with a for each command, and calculates and assigns the new price to each one of them. So, what are the differences, advantages, and drawbacks of either way? Something that we've seen and bears repeating is that even though the for each command can be used in a web panel, it cannot be used to change the database directly by assigning values to attributes, as that can only be done from a procedure object. Nor is it possible to code a new command in a web panel or include a delete command within the for each. This is only valid in procedures. However, in any object, we can change the database with business components. In addition, when we use business components, the consistency of the data to be updated in the database is validated, triggering the rules stated in the transaction executed as a business component. The rules that generate messages such as message and error are also triggered and the corresponding messages are saved in a collection that can be run through and printed. None of this can be performed in a procedure. Thus, we've seen several ways to update the database in a Genexus application.